Let's discuss the training loss versus the validation loss. We talked earlier about a chart here where we had So we're looking at this quadrants of, for example, low training loss and low validation loss. And this is what we like. If we have high validation loss but low training loss, that means we're overfitting. If we have both high validation loss and high training loss, that means we're underfitting. And we know our solutions here, right? For overfitting, we need to regularize or possibly have a simpler model, something like that. Uh, for underfitting, we, or for overfitting, a simple one is add more data. For underfitting, then we need a more powerful model or reduce the regularization. If we have low validation loss and high training loss, you'd think that's not possible, right? So if we looked at a, something like this, epochs versus loss, and if our training set looked, let's say, like this, and our validation actually went below, how could that happen? Well, there are several different possibilities. One possibility, and this is the possibility you have to really watch out for, that you're leaking data from your validation data set into your training data set. So what would example that be? Well, one example uh, might be do you just actually have particular X's uh, and Y's from, that are present in your training set and they also are present in your validation set. Another example might be you are leaking some sort of data. So it's not the, you have the actual training examples uh, in both validation and training. Let's look at an example where you're normalizing your input. Okay, so let's say you've got pictures and you're normalizing the R, the G, and the B values. So normalize R, G, and B of, Im of your images. When you do this normalization, you are going to want to do this normalization. So you want to compute your mean and your standard deviation on your training data set. And then you would want to use it on any inference. So if you were checking the loss of your validation data set, for example, you would want to use the mean and standard deviation that you trained with. If you were out in the field wanting to inference, you would want to use the mean and standard deviation of this training data set. It would be tempting to try and use all the data you have. So if you were to go ahead and compute the mean and standard deviation of the training data set plus the validation data set, all of a sudden you are leaking okay? because you're using the information about the R, G, and B values from the validation data set in order to do training. And so that would be an example where the validation loss would be lower than it should otherwise be. So it will not be a good estimation of your ability to generalize. So possibility number one for why we get high training loss and lower validation loss would be leaking. Let's just say leaking, leaking from validation. A second possibility would be that somehow the training data set is harder than the validation data set. Well, how could that be? Well, maybe we're doing some sort of data augmentation, right? So maybe what we are doing is, so we've got a, a face in here like this. And these are the sorts of faces we see in both the training data set and in the validation. Although they're slightly different in the validation, right? Here uh, we might have uh, a particularly happy face, you know, with hair on it, let's say. Now let's say we do data augmentation. And so if we look at data augmentation, we might, let's say, do some zooming. So we might convert this picture into zooming and cropping. So we're going to zoom in on the top 
right of this photo. So we end up with something like that, right? It's that picture here. Well, this is a hard problem, right? It's hard to see that that is a smiley face. So we've got, we're, we're, we're doing quite a bit of zooming here and so we're losing much of the face. So that now, if that's not what we actually normally see in the validation set, that's not what we see out in real life, then we're basically forcing the model to learn from a really hard training. And that's not always a bad thing. So for example, if you're training, let's say to lift weights and you are often lifting 200 pound weights, then in competition, when you only need to lift 190, you might find that easier than if you'd only been uh, training with the same difficulty as you are in competition. So here we're training harder than we actually are in the actual competition. So this is an example of why it might be that the validation loss could be less than the training loss. So we could look at this as, let's say, hard test set. Sorry, hard training set. A third reason that we could get this, there are certain kinds of regularization, like for instance, dropout, which we'll see when we get to the neural networks, that the way they work is during training, they limit the capabilities so for example, if you've got a bunch of connections that happen, during training it might disable some of these connections. Think of it as your brain, where it's actually like dropping out certain neurons, all right? So certain neurons aren't allowed to be used as you're learning things. But later, when you are calculating the validation loss or when you're actually going to infer you have the use of all of your neurons. So that training time is harder than it is at, again, think of it as competition time, as validation time. Um, so we limit our capabilities during training, but we have full capabilities during validation and inter inference. So that is a reason why again, we can get lower validation loss. The reason really again being training is harder for another reason. So here we have a hard training, se training set, and here I guess what we would think of is limited model. During training. And an example of that is dropout regularization.